Back in the years of the World Arm Wrestling League, Michael Todd seemed nearly untouchable. He was able to get revenge on Devin Larratt, who had formally defeated him in Arm Wars and was a very difficult style match for him. Although controversial, he managed to narrowly defeat Jerry Cataret, who was also a terrible style match for him. And to many people's surprise, he defeated Dave Chafee 3 to 0 without much of a problem. There was one moment where it looked like Dave might have a chance to pin him, but most of the match, Michael looked like he was in cruise control. And at the time this match took place back in 2019, Dave was considered a real contender for number one in the world or at least pretty close to it. At the time, Michael was considered by many to be number two or even potentially number one in the world. So what happened? Michael went from the very top of the pack to losing to people who are not even ranked. And now, unfortunately, Michael has had a pretty serious injury and in tearing his bicep. In this video, we will discuss why Michael was able to reach such a high level in 2019 and what caused his level to drop so far shortly after this. The first thing we have to understand about Michael is that he is not a normal arm wrestler. Michael has been famous throughout his entire career for pulling in the ugliest positions imaginable. Michael actually started out as a hook puller, but Michael's hook did not look pretty. He simply refused to give up and would rely heavily on the integrity of his elbow to win matches. This caused the range of motion in Michael's elbow and shoulder to shorten. A lot. After some time of competing with this style, Michael's arm would no longer straighten and it would also not bend very far. This meant that Michael was no longer capable of pulling using a traditional style. Michael was forced to adapt. This brings us to the good old under the table version of Michael Todd. Michael found that he was far stronger in a more extended position. This position gave him more access to back pressure and pronation than if he would try to arm wrestle standing up. Here we see Michael attempting a standard back pressure lift from an upright position. We can see that Michael just does not have any access to power from this normal position. So much so that he was actually able to lift more weight with his left arm than with his right arm in this classic stance. Michael started finding more and more success with the King's move but he was still also pretty new to it and was always perfecting his technique. Michael was clearly very strong in this position, but there were also clearly some problems with the technique that left Michael vulnerable to people with long arms climbing over it, or people with normal length arms asking him where he was going. Regardless, Michael was very close to the top level, he just needed a bit more power and a bit more refinement. But later on, something happened that would jumpstart Michael's improvement, the launch of the World Arm Wrestling League or WAL. The WAL was a league centered more around entertainment than any other league in the past. The WAL made a few tweaks to the standard rule system that would appear to be minor to the untrained eye. But these new rules hugely benefited Michael Todd. Firstly, at this point in time, they were not calling a foul for an athlete's humorous dipping below parallel. Here we can see that Michael's upper arm is at a decline angle allowing him to use a technique I will refer to as the seesaw. As Michael drops his body, he pivots off the elbow pad and his hand height increases. Next, the WAL implemented 7x9 inch elbow pads instead of the 7x7 elbow pads that were standard at the time. This gave more power to all outside styles of arm wrestling and especially more power to the king's move. And finally, not only were the pads longer, but they were also very squishy and were more rounded than normal elbow pads. This meant you could pretty much be off of the pad and on the table, but still technically on the pad. Sort of. Basically, all of these things made Michael super overpowered. Michael was able to pull with his arm fully extended, but in the center of the table, or even sometimes in the offensive position. In other leagues, Michael would need his opponent to attempt to pin him in order to access his strongest position. But now, Michael could drop below the table, slide to the back of the pad, and access his strongest extended position anytime he wanted to. This led to Michael's win over Devin Larratt in 2018. 
Michael was able to generate so much height using this technique that his forearm was nearly vertical. Devin was unable to match Michael's height, so Michael took control of the high ground and forced Devin into desperation mode. This moment was both the beginning and the end of Michael's reign. Michael claimed the number one spot in North America by doing this, but he also generated a lot of hate by using this technique. Michael went on to defeat Dave Chafee 3-0 in 2019. Once again, Michael demonstrated his ability to control the high ground and leave his opponent with one option, the flop press. And in this moment, Michael really may have been the number one guy in the world if the match took place under WAL rules and equipment. I would still consider Levon to be the favorite in that match, but you can never underestimate the power of a king's mover on WAL pads. Michael later defeated Jerry Cataret to close out the WAL season as the champ. But as we know, 2020 had a negative effect on just about everything, including arm wrestling. We did get to see Michael have a little sparring match with Devin, but the next real match did not take place until King of the Table won in 2021. And this was the moment where we saw just how big of a difference the WAL pads and rules made. The King of the Table League decided to go back to the 7x7 elbow pads as well as not allowing a decline humorous angle. Michael could no longer use the legendary seesaw technique. This means that he could no longer take the high ground from Devon. Devon took control of the high ground and climbed and climbed until Michael's position was absolutely terrible. Devon continued to do this throughout the match and dominated accordingly. Of course, Devon also got bigger and stronger than the last time he pulled Michael, but in my opinion, switching back to standard elbow pads and rules was the leading factor in Michael's decline. After this match, Michael went through a series of very unfortunate events. He went on a tour across the country in which he developed a severe overuse injury as well as getting very sick to the extent that he was on a ventilator at one point. But Michael was still determined to get back on top. Michael ended up having a match with Gennady Quigvenya. Michael was considered the heavy favorite by most going into this match. And while not as clean as Devin Larratt, Gennady was able to climb over the King's move and sweep Michael Todd. This match really started to confirm that Devin didn't only get way stronger. Michael also just did not seem to be on the same level he was before. And in my opinion, the rule system played a big part in this. If Michael was able to use the seesaw technique, he likely could have outclimbed Gennady and the match would have looked very different. But unfortunately, he could no longer use this technique. After this, Michael had a match with Rivas Latidzi. And although this match was a bit controversial, Michael did end up losing. And at the time, Rivas was an unranked polar. When Michael lost to Rivas, he was no longer in the top 10 rankings. So in the span of less than one year, Michael went from the guy who was the number one rank in North America and hoping for a match with Levon to the guy who was no longer ranked top 10 in the world. After this, Michael was able to defeat Todd Hutchings 3-1. But from there, Michael had yet another streak of unfortunate events. Michael had decided to drop down in weight to the 115 kilo weight category. Michael was scheduled to pull Evgeny Prudnik for the number one spot in the world at 115 kilos. And then, tragedy. Michael partially tore his bicep while practice pulling with Austin Jaggers. Michael got multiple stem cell injections and began to heal. And once again, Michael had an opportunity to become number one in the world, this time at 105 kilos. Michael was scheduled to pull Ungerbaev for the number one spot. And unfortunately for Michael, Ungerbaev's technique was pretty much perfect to beat the King's move. He did not rush early offense, he allowed the match to go a bit on his losing side of the table so that Michael did not have access to his power. And from here, with Michael having no access to the legendary seesaw technique, Ungerbaev was able to climb and climb to the point that he was so high up on Michael's hand that he could press through the King's move. Michael was so close to that number one spot, but just couldn't quite get it. And then out of nowhere, Michael tore his bicep again. This time it was a full tear. It seems crazy that Michael's bicep held up versus Ungerbaev and then randomly tore in a local tournament, but I suppose that it partially tore during his match versus Ungerbaev and then fully tore later on. And this brings us to the current period of time. Michael has now had a surgery to repair his torn bicep and seems to be on the mend. It may look pretty hopeless for Michael Todd fans at the moment, but there are two things that actually may be positive. First, when arm wrestlers tear their bicep, they often come back stronger after surgery. So Michael may actually come back stronger with more back pressure than he had before. 
Second, the World Arm Wrestling League may come back. Now, I know there's been talk of the WAL coming back for a long time now, so who knows what will actually happen. But if Michael Todd's bicep heals up and is stronger than before, and you combine that with WAL pads and rules, Michael might reach number one in the world at a 110-ish kilo weight class. It will be very interesting to see how this all unfolds over the next year. Time will tell if Michael can reach that top level once again.